Welcome back, everyone, to theCUBE's live coverage here in Las Vegas. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE, with Dave Vellante, my co-host, head of CUBE Research. We are here for SAS Innovate 2024. Our next guest, CUBE alumni, Jay Upchurch, CIO at SAS. Distinguished guest, Jay, great to see you. Thanks for coming back. Thank you, it's great to be back. It's been a while, yes. we were here last, a couple of months ago, and then saw each other at the SAS uh, Pro-Am, SAS Championship. Um, a lot's changed. The, the, the statements that were made at the last event six months ago was, we're going to do this, right. and it's happening. That's so right. you're starting to see great proof points, you're starting to see the flowers bloom, uh, really good job, congratulations to the, the team. Um, a lot of stuff going on. But there's really, like, there's a lot going on. There's like, IT departments transforming. What's your view of what's happening in AI right now? You're seeing a lot of it, because obviously you got to get the infrastructure done right. right. A lot of stuff going on in the middle layer, and then obviously the applications are, are changing radically. Yeah. I, a couple things, I, mean, I think you're exactly right. Last year, we, we made a lot of commitments about things where we thought things were going to go. Fast forward to where we are now, amazing announcements today on new product innovations, trying to propel the industry forward right with our, uh, with our technology, and the adoption of, of data and analytics, and especially on the Gen AI front, has been outstanding. We saw it in our cloud numbers, our results, our financial results is coming last year as well. Um, and then, of course, that brings all the technology delivery challenges to CIOs around the world. And that's, that's really where I sit. So from what I see, both in terms of internal operations for SaaS, and then also for our customers who happen to run in our SaaS managed cloud offer. I mean, transforming operations and leadership opportunities with AI has been big. Yep. What's been the big operational focus in terms of where people are seeing instant value that they're putting the stake down or yeah. getting some beachhead on? Could you share any thoughts you see there? Well, on the generative front, it's not instant value, unfortunately. It's really been a lot more of, um, I'll say instant science experiments. So everybody's got an idea. I've got, you know, I, I saw this amazing generative AI uh, capability. It was marketed to me more as a consumer than as of an enterprise, but then they bring it back to the enterprise. They're like, hey, I, I think I could do this, how? And that's created this concept that I, I keep calling just shadow AI situation where CIOs are finding out that businesses, our business partners are creating all these different science experiments with generative AI technology, unbeknownst to, to, to the CIO. So that means it's without some of the, yeah. the IT guardrails or the security guardrails that are required to make sure that we're doing it safe and effectively. So how, I mean, I'm sure it's acute, but I think about the yeah. Hadoop days, yeah. the big data days where shadow big data was ran oh. rampant, and people realized, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> gotta rein <laughs> it in. We gotta rein it in. Whereas today, at least there seems to be, between the, you know, the, the chat GPT awakening and reining it in, there seems to be a lot more focus on you know, governance and, and legal and compliance edicts. Yeah. Or, or would you liken it more to the, the big data days? I think, I think last year was more like the big data days. Uh -huh. I think there was a lot of public opinion about, um, about what the, the, the governing rules should be and there were a lot of governing bodies put, coming together to meet to talk about it, but there wasn't a lot of structure yet. And what happened was the excitement of the innovation hit the street first. And so what we saw were business partners who said, well, I have an idea. I think I can, I can streamline my operations with this uh, uh, artificial intelligence concept. And so if you didn't have a good, tight relationship with your IT partner, you probably went off and did it on your own. Remember, businesses are used to being able to do it on your own. Software as a service, the ability to do, do it without a lot of oversight is there. The problem with shadow AI is that the risks are higher. Yeah. Suddenly, proprietary data, confidential data, unintentionally leaving your premises, going out to an open language model. Next thing you know, you've got leakage, and that's a real big problem for our customers. So how do you handle something like this? <clears throat> True example. Got a developer, the developer happens to like ChatGPT, for whatever reason, uh, pays for it and uses it to help write code. But that's not allowed at the company. By edict, you can't use that. And so <laughs> you know, the, the, the security group comes down and says, hey, you can't do that. Yeah. No more. Developer says, oh, okay, sorry. What does he do? Goes to his phone. Does it there. Right. And writes his Python script there. Right. How do you handle something like that? Well, I think first of all, you, <laughs> putting up guardrails and saying you can't do it is is probably not <laughs> realistic. I mean, I think because for that for that very yeah. reason, at SAS we 
we have the luxury of having a very enlightened workforce because this is the world we live in, right, in data and analytics as it is. So that part of it is easier from an education. People understand the risks a little easier. So we definitely put up um, our acceptable use policies. We put in some guardrails around watching data flow in and out to make sure that there's not a, a things going to places that it shouldn't. And we trust our employees. We want to actually harness the creativity that our employees have, as opposed to coming in and just putting up a big firewall that says, no, you just can't do it. Now, I do have some customers, especially in sensitive areas like defense and others, that are like, yeah, I just don't even have that as an option. I've got to keep everything inside of that tight bubble. Lock it down. And in those cases, that's tough. Now they're trying to figure out, well, how do I engineer that in-house? In and that gets really, really expensive. So we, we, you know, we've tried to embrace our partners where they are as a business. Um, I think our relationship management model, so we, we take our best consultants in IT and we go out to our divisional partners. We want to understand what are you looking for? How can you help? How can we shape uh, the demand through IT to come back to something that's, that's usable? So that way we're not, we're not a barrier, right, for adoption now, instead we're actually accelerating the, uh, the use of uh, AI, especially in the generative space for our partners. So years ago, I learned from many CIOs, because I'm always talking about technology, what about this, what about Gen AI, Gen AI? what are the pluses and minuses, I want to know about that. But years ago, I, I, I was educated that look, it's, People process, okay, that's the most important thing. Technology's going to come, technology's going to go. Right. That's, it's change management, we got to get that right. right. And then, you know, we've, we'll always figure out the technology. Right. Do you agree with that? How do you see Gen AI in that wave? And I, I, I totally agree with it. I, I, somebody asks all the time, like, hey, what's your AI strategy? What's your Gen AI <laughs> strategy? What's your data strategy? What all? all of that stuff, those are techniques and tools to realize your business strategy. If you don't start with that end in mind, mm -hmm. I'm creating technology and solutions without a problem. And then I, I have something and I'm shopping it around for, to find the problem. That, that's not going to keep me in my job very long, right? Because we're all underneath certain financial pressures, of course, as a CIO. So I think 100% change management in terms of making sure people understand the destinations you're going to, how you're going to get there, let the technology come and fuel you along the way, but it absolutely starts with people in process. Jay, I got to ask you, on my, on my question is too, I'll pivot off Dave's is, what do you think about the scenario where, and again, we're seeing this on theCUBE as we go out to other events, the common theme is with AI successes, and you guys have someone on the stage here today, but in this case, his question is this, you see an end-to-end -end workflows being identified pre-generative AI. Right. So people have apps, financial apps, yep. they have mobile apps, so companies have big workloads mm -hmm. already, like they built. Okay, cool. Now generative AI comes in, rather than re reconstructing the house, they just retro it, so remodeling. Right. That's like what I call the remodel. So here I got a workload, well, very well defined, end-to-end, -end, serves a purpose, but all of a sudden, generative AI comes in, so it's going to change the data modeling, the governance, mm -hmm. user experience, so we know I could get that advantage. That's well-formed, that's scoped. You right. can look at that as an IT guy and say, right. hey, I can scope that against cost on GPU, compute. Depends, are we reasoning? Yeah. So as you get into the generative AI, the problem is, the problem statement is retrofit the workflow that you already have yeah. for Gen AI. That's a retrofit. Right. Is that, do you see that, and is that real? I mean, because that's, I mean, that seems like the, what people are doing, but then how do you execute that? It, that's a complete redesign yeah. of a pre-existing workload. And does it, you know, is it, does it really make you that much better at the end, right? Is the juice worth the squeeze in that case? Oh, well, and, well, that'd be an executive decision, right? And from a, from a Gen AI standpoint, where you plug it in for fit for purpose of what the generative, the creative answer is. So as an example, what you heard yeah. earlier today, right? the quantitative answer versus the creative answer. So in that end-to-end -end workflow, where can you, where are you looking for creativity versus where are you looking for a quantitative de decisive okay. answer? So your point is, rightfully so, is you got to know what the juice is and what the squeeze is. Uh, absolutely. And so that's going to be on IT and leadership, right? That's right. Together, and then go. Th that's exactly right. And I think what's interesting too about this whole movement is the role of the CIO having changed so fundamentally because of the digital delivery of solutions and mm -hmm. services. Now you bring in Gen AI and you're thinking about what's the end game, right, from yep. a financial commercial perspective, or, fi or it could be end up being an expense management model. How does Gen AI plug in? Is it worth it in the end? Because Gen yeah. AI is not cheap, yeah. right? I mean, you've heard hey. it from the hyperscalers. Yeah. I mean, they're running out. <laughs> I mean, we're burning up CPUs, we're burning up energy, trying to get through all the compute, right? 
So yeah, absolutely, you got a fit for purpose. So. I want to ask, I, want, I don't want to ask about SaaS and your budget specifically. Okay. Uh, but I want to ask Somebody's about- Somebody's going to ask anything. Somebody's going to ask No, I won't, I won't, <laughs> unless you want to share. But broadly, amongst your colleagues, your CIO yeah. colleagues, because I'll tell you what we're seeing in the data, and I wonder what you're seeing. At the macro, uh, we're actually seeing sort of an inverse proportionality to the two-year treasury. In other words, when the Fed tightens, IT budgets tighten. Yeah. Right? And, and, and when they, they signal they're going to loosen, seems like IT budgets get looser. Right now they're getting a little tighter because of that signal. So that's at the macro level. 40% of the customers we talk to say they're stealing uh, from other budgets to fund Gen AI. The ROI timelines, when we first started doing the survey, were inside of four months to get return on your Gen AI projects. They're now shifting, you know, we talk about shift left. ROI timelines are shifting right, because people are getting smart. They're like, why should I sign up for all this? Right. And then the use cases that we see today are very chat GPT-like, document yeah. summarization. So Agents. So yeah. that's broadly what we're seeing in the data. Can you share what you're seeing amongst your, your colleagues? Well, do you yeah. agree with that, and then what are you seeing? Yeah, I think, I, mean, I do, I do. I, I think that there was early adoption for workforce productivity, definitely for coding. And yep. so if you're looking for a quicker return on your investment, those are probably two use cases or categories that are a little easier to, to catch up on early. The, the aspirational that become a little bit longer, those are the ones that I think you can get into a case of I'm spending a little more and I'm waiting longer to get the return on, and that gets CIOs in precarious positions really quick with their board, if you're not careful. I do think as a budget, it's interesting, I think IT budgets were originally under a lot of pressure you know, in 2021, 20, right? And then as, as we kind of came out of that, everybody wanted to go digital. There wasn't as much of a, of a constraint on digital investments. Then it started to con, con, uh, contract a little bit. Everybody wanted their dividends back from all those digital investments. And now we're kind of back on this hype cycle of Gen AI and all of a sudden the budgets are starting to grow again. The, the, the idea of I'm stealing from yeah. different budgets is very real mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, we all count, came into our financial years thinking, okay, I know how I'm going to spread it out. And now all of a sudden, hey, wait, I need more for Gen AI, so I'm going to steal a little bit from this group and maybe a little bit more for this group because that Gen AI project actually will help them in the long run. That's the premise. So yeah. you might steal from productivity you know, apps maybe because Gen AI can maybe help that. Maybe, maybe legacy productivity apps or, or, just, or collaboration. Or, or actually other divisional budgets. That's so what I've heard too. Non-IT, because at the yes, end of the day, IT, I hear a if lot. that Gen AI actually helps produce productivity gains for those other organizations, yeah. they'll fund that IT organization just a little bit more. Okay, so, that's, so, so it's actually, stealing is the wrong word, it's being funded Re -re from, from non-IT budgets. That's, that's, I'm going to use the that right the next time one of my partners challenges me on stealing their budget. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the right way to use that. Yeah. Yeah. You go. Yeah. Police plot our entry for yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. It, 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 the struggle there is very real, right? I yeah. mean, I, the, the investments in, in AI and Gen AI to keep up with it, especially if that return on investment period is longer than what your CFO is comfortable with, you got to do a very careful negotiation internally. You've got to be able to tell the story of where you're going to get to with it to justify it, and you got to get the buy-in from the business. And that's where back on that relationship manager role is so important. If I don't have credibility in the IT services that I'm delivering to that division, they're not going to want to help me. And the they're data not. is so clear. I yeah. mean, during the pandemic, it was, it was, it was cloud, RPA, uh, a AI, and yeah. containers were all really way up there in terms of spending momentum. And then just one month prior to ChatGPT, you could see AI doing this. And then once ChatGPT hit, yeah. AI's doing this, everything else kind of came down in the yeah. data. It was very yeah. clear. And the other thing too, we learned at uh, the multiple events we've been through this year and recently val uh, validated at Google Next last week was is that the IT workforce has been busy, not overfunded, and then the digital transformation seat at the table has been going on for years, and now the boards are saying to the, that table, where's our growth from Gen of AI? That's right. What's your Gen AI strategy? That person comes down to the organization, and there's a huge gap between where people need to be leveled up. So there's a huge like, issue around, okay, now how do we execute? So, okay, take the scenario. Jay, where's the growth? What's your Gen AI strategy? <laughs> okay, boss, I'm on it. Okay, then you go back to your team. What's our Gen AI strategy? Are they, what's, what is that like? Take us through that narrative of what, happens next? Is that uh, the aggregation of successful shadow AI? Or, hey, thank God we ran some shadow AI because now I have to have a growth strategy. Take us through the mindset and, and what happens in that progression. 
Yeah, I mean, I think internally, there's there's always a lot of ideas around how you can use Gen AI. So you can definitely harvest that from the collective workforce and come back with a story if you need to. Um, is there a real shadow of deployments behind that sometimes? And you've got to go kind of, kind of rein those in a little bit. Um, I think the the idea of, of growth tied to Gen AI inside of corporate IT is really tough. It's much more of an idea of can you do more with less? It's a, it's a productivity gain model more than anything else. Yeah. Um, it does give you a chance like digital transformation to yeah. re-engineer some of those key processes that you referred yeah. to before. That's an, an interesting return. But again, your board sometimes isn't really looking for that. They're looking for where the commercial gains from yeah, it. Are revenue. You, oh yeah, are you materially changing your expense profile or are you really materially growing revenue? I think on the Gen AI front for some of our corporate announcements today, that absolutely is a revenue game, right? Because we're going to create more productivity in our developments, right? And so that's where we're driving you're most doing, you're of actually our You're doing both. You're actually reducing the expense profile and driving revenue. That, that's right. So that's the holy grail right so there. So most companies I see are hitting singles right now with, yeah. with Gen AI. But the interesting conversation here around industry-specific AI is, is notable to me because there's some really complex use cases that ain't going to be four month ROIs. They might be four, five, six year ROIs or maybe more. You know, drug discovery and things of that nature. Maybe transformation in FinTech. Yeah. Is, but is they're building one. AI, they're not using AI. Their drug discovery will be a builder of their own AI system. Yeah, but, but so, I, I, right, okay. I, right, okay. Uh, someone but, who's using AI might get a faster payback. Yeah, yeah, but, but not, if gonna, not if they're going to solve cancer. That's, yeah, that's, that's true. A, that's what they I'm talking need, about. These yeah. really big, complex problems. Fair. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering what you're seeing in, amongst your, your, your colleagues in, in industry. Well, I think the, the, again, that dynamic between a creative answer and a quantitative answer is, is very real in terms of delivering an enterprise result. Yep. This idea of oh, we're going to take a, a governance model to the creative answer that it can return is very positive, I think, right now, and being received by our CIO forums and, and explaining how SaaS is augmenting that Gen AI capability to create real enterprise business decisions and, and results. I think that will actually condense down that ROI period from just the, the science experiments and the creative experiences that are going on right now with, with primarily all the generative AI. Jay, it's been great to see you. I know we got a hard oh, yeah. stop. We're going to get in and see the chicken, uh, hot, hot wings <laughs> the competition. Hot wings. Uh, it's going to be fun. Wings. <laughs> so, final question. Next year when we're sitting here talking, what's yep. going to be the conversation? Um, I think it's going to be continued growth of cloud from SaaS, because that's been a fantastic story now for us for many years. Our customers are enjoying the consumption of our innovation through software as a service and, and or hosted managed services. So I'm incredibly pleased with that continued growth. I think that enables them to continue to adopt that innovation. The announcements you saw this morning, the more they're going to come throughout the next uh, 24 to 48 hours, um, will continue to be front and center, and we want to make sure we're delivering that to them. Right. I think the Gen AI front is very real. I think the market is hungry for enterprise examples of Gen AI delivering real results. Yeah, I think SaaS is well poised to do that, and I hope next next year when we're on stage, we're giving you examples of that. Well, you had one great one on stage, great stack with uh, uh, the customer this morning, so great job. Yeah. For and, and that will potentially open up, maybe not the floodgates, but that's a gain sharing model once yeah. you can start throwing off some cash. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And that's going to see, yeah. it's because you got, you got big Gen AI backlogs right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. You guys <laughs> you did a great job from the last event. You're shipping production workloads with customers, monetizing, 30% growth in the product line, and uh, more coming. 30% growth in Via, 30% growth in SaaS Cloud, and, uh, and then on the industry solutions up as well. So very, very proud of the performance. Yeah. Very proud of the innovation that we dropped today too. Yeah. So I, mean, I think kudos to the R&D organization and we're looking forward to the market reception of that. Yeah. The Models is the first company to kind of do that in that level. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah, great Thanks. job. I love this, this they love, no, I love this, the saved prompts. I think that's an indicator of yeah, where yeah. it's going. Yeah. More saved prompts, <laughs> promptless is coming. That's right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, that's going to wrap up day Thank two. You. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, with Dave Vellante, theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech coverage. Thanks for watching. <laughs>